Well, how's everybody today? Doing pretty well, huh? Have you been outside uh, playing in the snow? Shoveling snow? Shoveling snow, yeah, driving in the snow? Yeah. Well, last fall <clears throat> in school, I'm not sure if you've ever, I'm, you've probably been to a, a volleyball game. Anybody ever been to a volleyball game? You've been to volleyball games, yep. Well, in a volleyball game, there's, uh, I believe there are six players out there. And uh, when they're out there, let's say, let's say it's the Enderland Eagles. They have black, is it black uniforms? White, black and white uniforms. And then there's one person with a different colored uniform. You ever noticed that? What color is their uniform? Let's say everybody's wearing black except one person. There's, there's his orange, okay. Um, so there's one person that has a, a different colored jersey that's totally different than everybody else's. Why is that? Do you know what that person is called? I didn't discover that till I don't know, about a year ago. I said, why is that person wearing a different uh, colored shirt? So I had to ask my friend what that meant. Do you know what that's, what is it called? It starts with an L, letter L. Yeah, a, a libero? The libero, yeah. And so I was thinking about this uh, person wearing this special colored uniform. So that person is really, really good at handling the volleyball. And so they go in there with that specially colored shirt, and they're in the back row, and they, they handle that ball, try and get that ball to the other people so that they can do what with it? Hit it over and spike it down and get a point, right? Yeah. Well, that person is special. There's something unique about that person. And they, that's why they wear this special shirt. And so I was thinking about that in our passage today. Uh, Karina just read something about uh, the Father set his seal upon Jesus because he's different. He's unique. He needs a special shirt. And so God sent his son, he, he sent a seal on him, kind of like he sent him into the game, sent him to our earth with a special shirt, a different colored shirt than everybody else. Even though he looked just like us, he was different in that he was true God and true man. And he was the one that would go and die on the cross for us. And so when you think of today's scripture passage and you hear that word, he said a seal on Jesus. Jesus, when we see Jesus, we should automatically think, oh, there's something different about him. And we, when we see him and we see him in the scriptures, when we hear the message, that God would work in our hearts, I believe. And that's kind of the idea behind that uh, setting a seal. And so that's why God sent his son Jesus. So kind of keep that picture in your mind when you see that person coming in with a special colored shirt for volleyball. Oh yeah, that's what Jesus, that's what God did for us. He sent his son, his son Jesus with a specially colored shirt to go to the cross and die for us. And so that's kind of the, the idea behind that word, set his seal, okay? So let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day and speak to our hearts today through your word and that we would not uh, resist or refuse your word, but that we would allow the spirit to open our hearts and receive and believe just as your word is able to do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thanks for coming up and take a snack for the road home too, okay? You can do that. Thank you. You're welcome. We're in the third message of uh, John chapter six here. We've been working our way all the way through the book of John, and then we kind of go back and forth, Genesis, and throw a few others in there for variety as well. But we're focusing on John for this month here. <clears throat> so we've already discovered a few things in the book of John. Quite a few years ago, uh, my wife and I, we went down to uh, Minnesota, Minneapolis area, and we went to a restaurant called Benihaha. Anybody else ever been there? I'm not sure if it's still there or not. I have no idea. But you would sit around this great big uh, table. Well, I, sh I take the back. You would sit around this uh, grill on a big table all the way around. Like you could fit probably 10, 12 people around there. And the chef 
he would come and stand there with you by his grill. And he would grill the food right in front of you. Perhaps you've been to a place like that. This place, the chefs, they were not only good cooks, but they were um, performers as well. They would uh, do tricks with their big knives or spatulas or whatever they had. They would chop the shrimp and they'd flip it in the air and they'd do what with it? They'd catch it in their hats. And for an Eastern North Dakota farm boy, he's like, okay. That's what, you know, if that's what entertains you, throwing shrimp on top of your head, I can go for it, I guess. But it was very interesting. They were very good at it, and they flipped that shrimp tail way up in the air and catch it in their hat, and, and it was very entertaining. And uh, it was very good food as well, and we ate a lot of food there at that, at that place. Well, I thought of that when I was uh, working our way through the book of John here. The people, the crowds, very large crowd, how many men were in that crowd? Anybody remember? There's 5,000 men, plus who? Women and children. So there's a lot of people there, okay? And Jesus, he uh, took some bread. How many loaves of bread? Five loaves of bread and how many fish? Two, you got it. Yeah, five loaves of bread and two fish. He looked up to heaven and he gave thanks and he fed 5,000 men and besides women and children, and they were satisfied. They ate till they were filled, okay? They thought to themselves, he's good, he's good material. He'd make a nice king. So they started approaching him and going to force him to be the next king of Israel. And we tied that to the Passover. That's probably what they were thinking of doing, okay? Jesus, one man, 5,000 men besides women and children, Told them all go, told them to all go home. Everybody go home. And he told his twelve disciples, twelve men, twelve strong men, fishermen, get in the boat and go across to Capernaum. And he went up into the mountainside to, to pray. Okay. One man sent five thousand men, plus women and children, plus the twelve disciples. What does that tell you about him? He's got a lot of authority. And so we're seeing in uh, John chapter 6 here, Jesus is revealing to us his di divine nature. He is God. Okay? So we notice some of those things there. We also notice Jesus walking on water, and we link that to the book of Job. Uh, God tramples the waves of the sea. Okay? This is the kind of king I am, fellas. I am the king that walks on water. I am the king of the Old Testament. Okay? So we notice some of those things as well. We also noticed from last week that the people were amazed that Jesus was at Capernaum as well. They saw the boats go across with the 12 disciples. They saw Jesus go up into the mountain. Yet when they arrived, Jesus was there. And they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? How did you get here before us? Did you fly like Superman? Did you run super duper fast? Or how did you get here? And so they were curious about that as well. So it would lead us to our first thing here, the seeking of Jesus. The seeking of Jesus. The Jesus, he answered them. Okay. Now we've already noticed before that the people, the crowds, they were following Jesus because they saw the signs and the wonders and the miracles and the entertainment they got out of it, and they got their bellies filled up. Okay. So Jesus, he answers them here in our passage, Truly, truly, I say to you, okay, Whenever you see those words, truly, truly, what's trying, what is Jesus trying to communicate to the crowds and to you and I? Do you want to take a guess? What's that? Very important, yes. This is very important. Uh, you could say, listen up, listen up. When Jesus, the Son of God, tells us truly, truly, uh, something very, very important is taking place. And he's opening up our ears with those words, okay? <coughs> it's also kind of a, a triple statement here. You get, truly, truly, I say to you. Okay? And so Jesus, notice the authority in his voice. He doesn't say, well, so-and-so said, or 
my pastor said, or whatever, I say to you, okay? So what Jesus is going to tell the crowd, and because God's word is living and active, he's going to speak to our hearts as well today, he's got something very important to share with us. Something very important to tell us, okay? So that's what, that's what happens when you see those words, truly, truly, I say to you. You seek me. <clears throat> they were seeking him. We've already talked about that. You seek me. And notice what we, you tie in what we've already seen. They were seeking him as they were walking across, coming to the mountain to look for him, to watch him do some signs and wonders. They got in the boat and they went over to Capernaum. They were seeking him there. They found him in the temple. So they were seeking him. They were in that process of seeking him. Okay. So that's what they were up to. You seek me not because, notice, you seek me not because you saw signs. Okay. This is a, sits in a negative sentence here. Jesus is giving them a warning, or we call, he's giving them some law, some stern law. At the same time, I'm glad he does, because the people are on the wrong track over here. And his words are getting us back to the right track, at least he's trying to. You seek me not because you saw signs, but because you ate of the loaves <clears throat> and were filled. Okay. So we noticed from last time, Jesus took five loaves and two fish, and he multiplied them and fed 5,000 men besides women and children, and they were filled. They ate until they were satisfied. They had 12 baskets of scraps, fragments left over, and Jesus had gathered them up to anything to be lost. When you see it in this uh, setting here, this particular verse here, they ate and they were filled, uh, it carries with it the idea, again, we're sitting within a negative sentence, not because, da, da, da. The idea behind filled carries a sense of, of uh, negative sense to it, has a, a negative sense. In this, okay, you ate because you were filled. It carries the idea that they ate a lot. And they ate and they ate and they ate. We might not get bread again tomorrow. We better eat more of this stuff. Oh, let's, I'm stuffed. Well, I better eat a little more just in case for the road home. We might use the expression, uh, they ate like pigs. They just stuffed it in. Because that's the only thing they could think of that day was to fill their bellies with this bread and fish. Okay? They stuffed themselves. And that's the only reason they were following him. Because they got their bellies filled up. Okay? So we could ask ourselves this question. How about you? Why do you follow Jesus? Is it just to get your bellies filled? just to get your physical needs met. Jesus can do this stuff for me. He can fill my pocketbook with money. He can fill my grain bins with grain. He can do all this physical stuff for me. And that's the only reason I follow him. That's what they were doing. And be, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled, okay, and that's the only reason they were seeking him. But remember now, what was Jesus doing all day long when the crowd came? He was preaching and teaching them many things about the kingdom of God. But that's not why they were there. They just listened to that so that they could get their bellies filled up. Okay? They had no interest in hearing about the kingdom of God, the preaching and the teaching of it. How about ourselves? How about you today? Do you come here today to hear the preaching and the teaching of God's Word, that that would fill your hearts and souls? That was Jesus' main goal. Yes, He's concerned that you have food to eat, but He's even more concerned that you recognize Him as God and that you let Him feed your souls. And so we are encouraged to seek Him for those reasons not necessarily because he fills our bellies and so on and so forth, but seek him because he preaches and teaches to me. He speaks to me through his word. 
So we notice the seeking of Jesus. The second thing we notice here is the seal of Jesus. The seal of Jesus, okay? Now, in verse 26 there, sometimes that can be kind of hard for us to hear. Yeah, you know, I don't always seek Jesus for the right reason. Pastor, you hurt my feelings. The good news is that Jesus doesn't leave you there. Okay? He's like the good shepherd. Okay? He, he woke him up. Okay? He, he's got their attention now. As you see there in verse 27, do not work for the food. Okay? So we'll talk about that. So Jesus, he kind of, uh, he takes his word and he speaks to our hearts. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm only interested in following Jesus if I get something good out of it, something out of the deal. It's the only reason I come here today is because I get something out of the deal. And Jesus says, mm, you're going down the wrong way. So we get to this second thought here, this seal of Jesus. The people kind of like, um, Jesus is jarring them. He's, he's helping them to get back on the right path and the right way of seeking him. Okay? So we move from some law, but Jesus doesn't leave us there. If, if, we, if we stopped here, you'd go, boy, that was really discouraging today. I'm never coming back again. Okay? We aren't going to leave you there. We're going to move you back into the right direction and the right reason to seek Jesus. It's kind of like um, if you go to a basketball game and you're uh, guarding the person dribbling the ball and all of a sudden you stop dead in your tracks because someone set a screen. That's what Jesus does to the people. They've been tracking him for this reason and all of a sudden they get screened and they're stopped dead in their tracks. We're going to go this way. Wake up, everybody. This is what I, would, this is what I want you to do. This is what I'm inviting. He's giving you a gracious invitation. This is gospel, okay? Do not work for the food which perishes. Okay? That's what they were doing. The crowd, they were working for food. This is what they were currently doing. Over there on the mountain, across the sea they went, into Capernaum, and trying to find Jesus. They were working to find a food that only satisfied their bellies. And they were making great efforts in that to get their bellies filled. But Jesus tell them, tells them, do not work for food which perishes. And they were working for it by seeking. But notice that food that they were seeking, what happens to it? Search the letter P. It perishes, okay? It is currently perishing, and it will always perish. Okay? If the only thing in this lifetime that you're working for is a loaf of bread and a couple of fish and a, a can of Pepsi and a new pickup and a new house or da da da, this earthly stuff, Jesus tells us all that stuff will perish. If that's the only thing that you're seeking Jesus for in this life is to get your earthly needs met, these earthly things. Jesus says they will all perish. You will end up with nothing. It's not that those things aren't important. God gives them to us to be stewards of them, of all the things that he gives to us, and use them to his honor and to his glory. It's not that there's something bad with that stuff. But if that's the only reason I seek that stuff, and I'm not seeking Jesus in his word, to hear his word and change my life, confession and faith and da 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 you're going to end up with nothing. And I'm really glad that Jesus tells us that. So I don't have to go through my whole life and end up dying. Good grief, I ended up with nothing. You see, that's good news. Do not work for the food which perishes, okay? but for the food which endures to eternal life. Okay? Work for the food that endures to eternal life. This is the food that Jesus wants you to work for. Work for this food which endures to eternal life, okay? And be doing it right now. Right now, uh, January 16th, 2022. Start working for this food right now, okay? Because this food, and again, the context is Jesus was preaching and teaching about many things about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. 
This is the food that lasts forever. This is eternal food. Okay? So Jesus wants you to do that instead. And so you notice a sharp contrast. The sharp contrast is this food that we work for. Um, if it's only earthly stuff, physical stuff, to get my physical needs met, that food perishes. Eternal food, I didn't say it right, the food that Jesus is trying to get across to them, that he wants to offer them, that preaching and the teaching of many things of the Word of God, many things of the kingdom of God, that food is what? Eternal. And so you have these two kinds of food. One food perishes, one food is eternal. Know that God would stir in your hearts and stir in my heart. Jesus, that's the kind of food I want. Eternal food. Feed me till I want no more. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because you're receiving eternal food, okay? Now, you notice the word work in there. Do not work for the food which perishes, but work, you insert it into there, for the food that uh, endures to eternal life. Okay? Now, we might think to ourselves, work, well, I gotta, that means I have to work for this food then. I have to work for this food. I have to earn this food. I have to do lots of good things to get this food, this eternal life. I gotta, I gotta do something to get to this eternal life. There's some kind of work I have to do. Well, you finish off Jesus' words because that is not correct thinking. I don't work for it. Okay? Someone is behind the idea or moving me to work for it. I can't work for this food because notice what Jesus says here which the Son of Man will, search the letter G. I heard it. He'll give it to you. Okay? So you automatically catch something's, something's unique about this bread. Work for the food that, which endures the eternal life, which Jesus will give. Okay? It's a free gift. This free gift of eternal life, this food, is given to you. Do you notice the grace of God? He's giving you this food. The uh, desire to work for this food, it comes from Him. Okay? And it comes as you hear the Word of God. We hear this word, do not work for the food which perishes. Oh yeah, okay. But for the food which endures to eternal life. Oh. Which the Son of Man will give you. For on Him the Father has Father God has set his seal. Okay? Eternal life is a free gift. For God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay? For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. Okay? The free gift, and you see it in here. This is God's grace and his mercy coming to us. Speaking to us through his word, friend, I have a free gift for you. Okay? So, we notice that in there. God has set his seal. So when the people, when they saw Jesus take those five loaves of bread and those two fish and give thanks to God as he was looking up to heaven, and all of them ate till they were full, they stuffed themselves to the max. Okay? What that ought to have done is stirred in them. Stirred in them, I believe, this is God's Son. This is the Messiah. Stirring in their hearts belief. Okay? But what it only did was, hmm, he can fill my belly. I really like this bread. I can go home full. Okay? And so that's what Jesus is doing as you even hear this word this morning here. God has sent his seal, okay? When they saw that, they should have, it should have been automatic, or I shouldn't say that. Uh, what God wants to do with that is, okay, this man can do this. He is God. Okay? He's wearing the special shirt. He does special things. 
He does signs and wonders that point to this is God. Okay? And so that's the idea behind he set the seal. Okay? And the third thing that we notice here is the uh, sending of Jesus. The sending of Jesus. Notice their words that they respond by. Therefore, they said to him, What shall we do so we may work the works of God? Okay. Notice what has happened here. Okay. What should we do so we may work the works of God? Is works there singular or plural? What should we do so we may work the works of God? Is works singular or plural? Works is plural. Yeah? It means many works. Lots of works. Jesus, we, we heard your word. We, uh, we ate and da, da, da. And now we hear this work, the works of the eternal life there and working for the eternal bread, da, da, da. What do we got to do? What kind of work should we do for the works of God? They thought it was many things. We could do this, we could do that, this, 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 that. And they automatically go to works righteousness. These are the things we have to do. What do we got to do? Give us, write a little book for us right now, or just give us ten easy steps. Well, you do this, 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 this. Ten easy steps to eternal life, for eternal food. And you get a little glimpse into our human hearts. The old nature wants to do something. We want to check the list off. I did this for God. I did this for God. I did this today, that today. Therefore, God, you should pay me with eternal works. Okay? But that's not what Jesus says here. That's how the people think, and sometimes that's how we think. We think we should do something for him. Okay? Like a checklist. Okay? Work the works of God. Okay? Notice what Jesus says to them. Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God. Do you notice the change? What should we do to work the works of God? Jesus says, this is the work of God. Did you catch it? Okay, I'll say it again. This is really important. That's why Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, this is fundamental doctrine. Okay? Teaching. This is the work of God. Okay? What should we do to work the works of God? Jesus said, this is the work of God. Did you catch it? Okay. What should we do so that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered, this is the work of God. Works, work. Did you catch it? All right. Okay, this, this is really, really important. Uh, they thought they had to do works, all kinds of works to receive eternal life, eternal bread, eternal food. Okay? Jesus says, no, 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 no. Okay? This is the work of God. Okay? This is God's work. Okay? This is the work of God that you believe in him who has sent you. Okay? It's, this is a work of God. If we are to be saved, if we are to receive eternal life, whose work is it? God's. Do I have any, is there anything I can do to receive eternal life? No. It is all God's work. That's how dependent we are on Him. Okay? And He is willing to do that. Isn't that good news? He is able to create, kindle, stir in your hearts belief. The work of God is to believe. Okay? We study in confirmation, I believe that I cannot by my own reason and strength come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me, enlightened me, uh, brought me, shown me through the scriptures. Okay? That's why he switches them. See? 
what Jesus is doing for them, they were on the wrong path. They were seeking him for um, food that perishes. And Jesus, as you notice back in some of those passages uh, where they record the same event, Jesus, he saw them and he saw that they were like sheep without a shepherd. You see, Jesus gives you these words today because he loves you. He doesn't want you on the wrong path. He doesn't want you working for food that perishes. Okay? Yes, we need food to live and so on and so forth. Okay? But he wants you to work for food which endures to eternal life. And he's saying, here I am. God has set his seal on me. Seek me and you shall live. Okay? That you would allow God to work in your heart and not resist what he's trying to get across, the work of God. Okay? As you hear his word today, God is working in your heart. As you hear his word today, as the Spirit of God stirs in you, the only thing that stops his work is, I'm not really that interested in that. I would just rather have a loaf of bread right now. And that's what was happening to the people. They were only interested in a loaf of bread and two fish. Rather than God was feeding them. Okay? He set a seal on them. Okay? That you believe in him whom he has sent. Okay? He sent him so that you can believe. As you hear his word, and God stirs in your heart. Okay? So as we hear today's passage, that we can be thankful and grateful that Jesus in his compassion and his grace and his mercy comes to us and says, okay, let's, let's seek me for the right reason here. Not for food that perishes, but that there is a food. Work for the food that endures to eternal life. And it's this work of God. Okay? And that we would say, I believe. Okay? As God stirs in your heart, the only thing that stops this um, work of eternal life is a, our hard, hardness of heart. I will not believe. It's there and available for you, and I would encourage you today to receive this eternal food through faith in Christ Jesus as he stirs in your heart. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for these words. Thank you, Lord, for coming here today and showing us that there's a better food. This food is you, Jesus. We'll discover a little bit later on here in John chapter 6, I am the bread of life. This working for this food that he, for eternal life is the preaching and teaching of your word. This word is you, Jesus. And so, Lord, that we would work for you, Jesus. That we would see you, that you would stir in our hearts belief. For we see that this is a work of God. Thank you, Jesus, for that. In your name I pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, now that we've had our spiritual bellies filled up, and I'm glad that you were able to come today and enjoy that uh, time of God speaking to you, encouraging you, and uh, making sure you go home full today. Also, feel free to stick around for a meal, uh, fill up your uh, bellies as well. That's important too. At 12 o'clock for our fellowship dinner, and enjoy that time together and fellowship as well. So as you go on your way, please receive this benediction. As you go on your way, that God would go with you. He would go out in front of you to show you the way. He'd be there right there beside you to befriend you. He would also go along behind you to encourage you along. That he would also be above you to watch over you. And that he would be within you to give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great rest of the week, and we'll see you next time.